fuck this show. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pals, Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with your Independence Day, July 4th SmackDown Live review. Started off on a more positive note. Happy Independence Day to my friends in the States. Happy belated Canada Day to my fellow Canadians up here. From there, we go to the house cleaning, which is also a lot of fun. Really trying to avoid talking about this show. The Q&A. Ask the Phoenix Q&A is happening in July. It's happening the week after Battleground. Go to the exclamation mark up there. Toss your questions in on the May, on the comment section of the May Q&A if you want to be involved in the July Q&A. It should be a lot of fun. I'll be posting a lot of reminders this month as we get to the end of the month. Also, end of this week, we're going to be doing the tackle and pay-per-view pick em for Great Balls of Fire. Hopefully, myself, Guapo, and Kristen by Thursday will have tackle up for this Sunday's uh, pay-per-view, the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view, which has just lost all comedic value at this point. But I do invite you guys to come Listen to the preview, join us for the pay-per-view pick them, throw your, uh, throw your predictions down in the box below, rank them as we, will, uh, as we will explain in the preview. It is a lot of fun. Guapo won the inaugural pick them, and Chaney took the next two back-to-back. -back. Congratulations to him. It's a lot of fun, and even if you don't care about the pay-per-view, it is fun. Uh, fun way to waste some time on Twitter. There is no prize. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't make any money on this channel, so I don't exactly have any money to spend. Join it if you want to join us for the fun, for the sake of having a good time. Speaking of Christian and Guapo, want to give a quick shout out to them as well as Monoxide, who started their new podcast um, on Monoxide's YouTube channel. And I can't, for the life of me at this particular moment, remember what the show is actually called. So I'm sorry about that. But Guapo, Christian, and Monoxide over on Monoxide's channel. If I think about it, I'm going to put a link down in the box below. So congrats to them. I heard the first episode. It's pretty damn good. They ripped me pretty hard for not liking Naomi. But that's fine. That's just how it goes. Speaking of ripping, let's talk about the July 4th, the America edition of SmackDown Live. That starts with John Cena. Because America, except no, it doesn't. It starts with a very Americana video package, WWE. American-based company. They're going to do the America stuff. I get it. It's all good. Vince is a patriot. I just, I just re. I, this is a really, really depressing side note. I, I rewatched the speech that Vince McMahon gave at the SmackDown after 9/11. Vince McMahon, for all else you can say about him, is a patriot. Um, now, take that or leave that. Call it a good thing. Call it a bad thing, depending on your point of view. But you know, hoorah, America! From WWE, a lot of people. I know a lot of people, especially in the UK, hate the Americana stuff, but at the same time, WWE is a worldwide company, but they are based in America, so we have to expect a certain amount of this sort of thing. John Cena comes out, and he gets this typical John Cena reaction. I will say, my opinion of John Cena hasn't exactly changed, but you can't deny there is an energy that comes from John Cena being part of the show. Now, whether you want to call that the energy that he brings, whether you want to call that the energy that the that the crowd emotes to him, you can't deny that there is something that is missing when John Cena is not there. As much as I hate to say it, um, it is what it is. He sits back, he soaks it all in. Let's go, Cena. Cena sucks. He's, you know does what he always do, sarcastically asks the crowd if he misses them, goes into a big, long speech about America and Independence Day and Roddy Roddy Ra, and I'm Canadian and I don't care. Then he compares the WWE to America. Now, again, I have, I have to say, WWE is a worldwide company. It has viewers all over the world. Various parts of the world think very high or very low of America. So comparing your company, comparing the show that we're watching right now to the country of America is a risky move for somebody like John Cena to pull off, but whatever. Says that he's an American, he wants to compete with the best. People are always spreading rumors about his future, calling him a part-time mascot for the WWE, which is true. He says, you know what, if my time's short, it's why I've become a free agent. I'm, I'm going to go out in a, you know, if my time is short, I'm going to go out in a blaze of glory. And I don't care what, he drops a bunch of names. He says Styles, who he's already fought. Nakamura, which is heavily rumored. Owens, which has happened. Orton, which has happened. 
at nauseum. Jinder, which we know is going to happen. Rollins, who broke his nose. Samoa Joe, which I'm sure will happen at some point. Lesnar, which has happened before. Seal chain to the face, etc. And then he really leans in and he says, Roman Reigns. And the reaction from the crowd, I've always said, not that I want to see the match. Roman Reigns versus John Cena is going to happen. It's the two marquee guys of WWE. I don't care about the match per se. What's going to be interesting to me more than anything else is the crowd. There are certain times when the crowd is more entertaining than the match. For all the athleticism and all everything that CM Punk brought to the table, what made CM Punk versus John Cena classic? It was the crowd. It was the way the crowd un in, uh, you know, unequivocally adopted CM Punk because he wasn't John Cena. Now you've got two guys that create that polarizing thing. I want to see this match because I want to see what the crowd does. I want them to put this in a wrestling town. Put it in New York. Put it in Philadelphia. Put it in Chicago. Put it in Los Angeles. If I want to be really selfish, put it in fucking Toronto. Oh, yes. Um, it has to happen at some point. He says, line them up, I'll knock them all down. I've got nothing left to lose. The franchise is back, and the champ is here. Now, now comes the moment of truth. We've got the typical bad guy foreigner with the title right now. So, obviously, Jinder Mahal is going to interrupt John Cena. John Cena is going to go into Battleground, or after Battleground, or maybe SummerSlam, get the title off of him. He's going to face AJ Styles. AJ Styles is going to get the championship. He's going to carry it right to WrestleMania. Shinsuke Nakamura is going to win the Royal Rumble, and we're going to get AJ Styles versus Nakamura at WrestleMania. Go ask uh, JD from New York. That's the only thing that can happen at WrestleMania. But that none of that happens. None of that happens. We get Rusev and his fucking epic beard <laughs> out there immediate USA chance. He says, you know, how dare you come out here and say that I don't work hard, I got hurt, you went and did a movie or something and now you're back, you've had comeback, uh, comeback commercials for months. Where's my commercial? I talked to Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon and they wouldn't even answer me on the phone. You won't steal any more opportunities from me, your American dream is a joke. Which makes Cena pander to the Americans some more. Which is fine. He said, let's do it the American way. Why don't you get down to the ring and you can be the punchline. Roddy, roddy, roddy. Uh, Rusev goes on to say, in my country, we're, we're proud. We march. We defend our country. Roddy, roddy, roddy. Here in America, you show how proud you are by stuffing your faces. Cena, then, I love this. For, for America and all of their, you know... The, all the bad, you know, sort of warmongering stereotypes of America, you know, going to war over any little thing. So John Cena says, don't forget the fireworks. We like to blow things up. <sighs> There's nothing to say there, is there? Cena challenges Rusev to a good old-fashioned flag match in honor of Independence Day. Rusev says, I accept your challenge, but I'm not going to do it on your terms. You're not going to tell me what to do anymore. We're going to do this on my terms. I accept your challenge to a flag match, but it's not going to happen today. The segment basically falls apart after that whole bunch of USA chants, and away we go. Daniel Bryan is in the back talking to AJ Styles and Chad Gable. The, uh, the Battle Royal is coming up tonight for the number one contendership to Kevin Owens' championship. Now, these guys both deserve to be in the Battle Royal, but they can't be, because Owens doesn't want them to. Tell me why I'm supposed to believe in Daniel Bryan as an authority figure when the champion is telling him who can fight for a championship opportunity. So he says, we're going to have a win-to-get-in match between AJ Styles and Chad Gable. It makes me think that uh, Jason Jordan is still hurt, but then again, later on, we find out that that's not true. Uh, Chad Gable's second week in a row having a, a singles match on SmackDown. Styles versus Gable, win to get in the Battle Royal. Now, this is an opportunity for Chad Gable to look really good against somebody like an AJ Styles, but did you, do you think he's going to win? Really? Let's talk about this. Color and will tie up in a waistlock takedown by Gable. Now, the commentators go out of their way to praise the uh, amateur Greco-Roman background of Chad Gable, which was really cool. 
series of kicks by Styles and a drop kick and a snake eyes forearm by Styles. Gable hangs Styles on the ropes, gut first. Corner suplex by Styles. Gable's Gable, sorry, counters the Styles clash into an ankle lock. And the commentators go crazy talking about how Kurt, the Raw general manager, Kurt Angle, is one of Chad Gable's heroes. It's why he pursued the Olympics. It's why he pursued a career in the WWE. It's, it's, it's very good. Calf Crusher by Styles. Deadlift belly-to-belly -belly suplex by Gable. Chaos Theory suplex by Gable is countered into a pin attempt roll-up by AJ Styles. Insiguri it's not an Insiguri, is it? It's a Pele. I don't know why I wrote Insiguri. <coughs> Pele by Styles, phenomenal forearm, Styles gets the win, uh, big long pause, AJ Styles goes back across the ring, picks up Chad Gable after the match in a show of respect, puts him up off the ground, not, not quite a handshake, not quite a pat on the back, but you know, gives him a nod, it's all good, Ryder in the back tells Mojo that they are both in the Battle Royal, now I love the continuity of this, AJ fucking Styles, the number one free agent prospect that, that WWE has picked up in a long ass time, Former, you know, TNA champion, former NIWGP champion, former New Japan, former uh, former WWE champion, debuted in the Royal Rumble, has had all these fantastic matches, etc. He just had to qualify for the Battle Royal. The Hype Brothers are just in it. For reasons. Carmella comes out with Ellsworth. Ellsworth grabs the microphone and reminds us he's an idiot. Carmella grabs the microphone and laughs at everybody who thought she would lose last week. You thought it was a it was a it was a bad thing. It was an injustice that I won at the pay per view, and you really thought it was going to get fixed last week, and it just didn't. I get what I want, and now I have the power. Naomi comes out. Now, Naomi's piece of shit. We know this. It's a fact. Sorry, social justice warriors, but it's just a fact. It is. You, you need to get over it. You, you really, really do. Now, she's a joke. She's a joke of a wrestler. Her, her entrance is shit. Uh, her finishing move is a cooch to the face in the middle of the women's revolution. What can we do to make it worse? What can we do to put the nail in the coffin of the SmackDown women's division? Oh! I know we can get our trash bag champion to cover the title belt in Christmas lights to give us all a seizure. She comes out with lights all over the belt, making it look like a piece of shit. She, she grabs a microphone, unfortunately, and squawks like a little hood rat for about two minutes until Daniel Bryan comes out. Daniel Bryan turns all his attention to Ellsworth. He says, you know, he kicks Ellsworth out of the building again. He finds him $10,000. He's suspended without pay for 30 days. And if he objects to any of this, he's going to strip Carmella of the briefcase. Oh, briefcase. Contract. I'm sorry. Apparently, one of the new words that Vince McMahon doesn't like is briefcase. Like belt and title shot. Vince is senile. Moving on. And if that's not enough... Naomi cocksucks her way to another victory over Lana in about two seconds, which is bullshit. But what I do like, what I do like is Tamina comes out while Lana's on the ground selling the nothing that has been done to her. Uh, I just, I can't help but think if Lana looked a little different, her luck would be better. If she looked a little different... Her luck would be a little better. There'd be a little more justice in her corner. I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. Tamina comes out. She doesn't attack Lana because they could play up the angle that Naomi and Tamina have a past. They used to be on the same team with the little gangster sister fucking bullshit. They don't do that. They could have Tamina come out and attack the champion, staking her claim as the next challenger. They don't do that either. She goes to the corner where Lana is and tells her to get up, get up and come with me. Uh, not quite a comforting thing, but, you know, get up and get up and come with me, and she just takes it over and leaves. And even JBL on commentary says it's a little bizarre. Now, if they're going to do a thing where either Tamina's in Lana's corner, or Tamina's going to toughen up Lana and train her and make her better, or Lana's going to go for the title with Tamina in her corner, or Tamina's going to go for the title and she wants somebody in her corner, that's... If you asked me to pair up any two women in an alliance... On SmackDown, I would not have picked Lana and Tamina. I'm, I'm kind of laughing because of how bizarre it is, but it's just bizarre enough to have my attention. And if the two of them are going to be going up against Trash Bag, and we can get the Christmas decorations off of the Women's Championship belt, 
then it could be a good thing. Fucking, don't even tell me that that was a match. Even if I, even if I wasn't pissed off that an undeserving champion still has the belt, don't tell me that was a match. Just don't. They had a good match at the pay-per-view. It was, it was interrupted by Carmella. There was a bunch of other bullshit. Lana was better than you or you or you or you or you or any of the other social justice warriors that are back in the trash bag want to admit and now they don't want they want her to have these quick matches you'll notice the rematch was like a minute long this rematch was like 10 seconds long because they don't want you to see it oh yes they want to keep the illusion that Naomi is good they want to steer away from the fact that her finisher is a fucking cooch to the face and her you know, no actual contact dance kicks and all the other seizure inducing bullshit that is Naomi. Oh, yes. Corbin attacks Nakamura in the back with the briefcase. Briefcase. Cena versus Rusev in a flag match is announced for Battleground. So now we've got two incredibly played out gimmick matches coming up at Battleground. We've got a Punjabi prison match. Didn't get to talk about that last week, and that's about all I want to say about it. And we've now got a flag match, along with a tag team rematch that we've seen before, and another match that we're going to talk about in a second that we've seen before. Usos, New Day, and some jagoff named Wale came out for the Usos versus New Day battle rap. Usos come out with extra Usos. For reasons, New Day comes out with what's left of Adam Rose's Exotic Express. For reasons, they do the battle rap, and I'm not going to tell you what they said. I will say it was entertaining. They went, they took a few personal digs. I really love that they brought up the Xavier Woods uh, sex tape scandal in in the only way that they really could in a, on a PG show. They met a lot of fun of Rikishi. They said that the Usos carry Roman Reigns as bags, and uh, all this and all that. It's it's entertaining for what it is, but it's ultimately pointless, isn't it? Uh, Usos shove the New Day after the Roman Reigns comment, and they get disqualified in the battle rap for shoving. Yeah. That's how that went. Aiden English versus Randy Orton. Aiden English does his singing shtick. He gets interrupted by Randy Orton, who comes out, does his posing on the ring. While he's posing on the ring, though, gotta love Aiden English. Aiden English says, are you finished yet? Hits Randy Orton several times in the face with the microphone, tosses him outside and tosses him into the steps, continues singing right into the commercial break. As we come back from a commercial break, there's a power slam and some choke and some clotheslines by Randy Orton, who tosses English over the commentator's table with some mounted punches. English eats the guardrail, eats the post, and eats the commentator desk once again. Off of that commentator desk, we get a suspension DDT on the floor and a chair shot that gets a disqualification for Randy Orton. Orton. And then Randy Orton hits an RKO after the match for reasons. What's lost in the shuffle in all this is Aiden English, who hasn't done fuck all since Simon Gotch left, just technically got a victory over the former 13-time WWE World Champion Randy Orton. Aiden English has a victory in the history books. <laughs> Uh, over Randy Orton, which is about as good as James Ellsworth having a victory over AJ Styles, but it still makes me chuckle. Jinder Mahal comes out, blah, 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 America sucks, I'm the champion, Orton calls him a jackass, lather, rinse, repeat. It's Independence Day, so we got to pick on the Canadians, I get it. Ty Dillinger is interviewed by Tyler Breeze in drag for reasons they got another Mike and Maria Canellis segment they're trying to be interviewed by somebody in the back I think it was Charlie Caruso the interview gets interrupted not only does the interview get interrupted when the cameras cut and pan to the audience not the people being interviewed but also a couple of metal poles get uh, knocked over while Sami Zayn is doing his stretches for the battle royal they have an awkward conversation for a long ass time. Sami Zayn's doing his like super excited fanboy thing. I like your message. You know, there's a lot of love and all that. And I wanted to apologize for interrupting you last week, but I had a match to get to. <coughs> Ultimately pointless. I don't. I. I remember Maria when she was in WWE before. I don't know anything about Mike Bennett, Canellis, whatever the hell they're gonna call his last name. So I have no reason to care about this feud that they're building between Sami Zayn and Mike Canellis. 
I, I don't even know that he's a heel, technically. I mean, he's obnoxious, and him and Maria just coming out and constantly talking about how much they love each other is obnoxious. So by default, Sami Zayn is the babyface, but I don't care about this match because I don't know what this guy can do in the ring because all he does is sit there and suck face with Maria Kanellis, which, while that does make me a little bit jealous because wouldn't you like to suck face with Maria Kanellis, it doesn't tell me anything about him as a wrestler. It doesn't tell me anything how he's going to be in a feud with Sami Zayn. So this was pointless. So Breeze was in drag. Ty Dillinger had to be interviewed by Tyler Breeze in drag, and Zayn was made to look like an awkward fanboy again. Let's pick on all the Canadians at once. Oh yes. The Independence Day Battle Royal for the number one contendership to the United States Championship with Owens on commentary. We've got Zayn, Connor, Victor, Dillinger, Jordan, Rowan, Breeze, Fandango, Ziggler, Ryder, Mojo, Sinkara, Harper, the Colognes, and AJ Styles. Now, I think it might have only been one of the Colognes, but it doesn't really matter. They don't factor into the match at all. Let's be real. Harper eliminates Ziggler with a lariat off the apron. Rowan tosses out both members of Breezango. Rowan dumps out Sin Cara on top of the recently eliminated Breezango. Harper clotheslines out Connor. Mojo clotheslines out Harper. Hypros eliminate Rowan. Mojo turns on Ryder. Zane eliminates Mojo with a haluva kick off the apron. And your final three are Zane, Styles, and Ziggler. Now, with the with the underdog popularity of Sami Zayn and the overall popularity of AJ Styles, the crowd goes nuts for Ty Dillinger. WWE, are you gonna do the right thing here? Of course you're fucking not. Your final three are one American and two Canadians when you've already got a Canadian holding your United States Championship. So of course they're not gonna do the right thing. Mounted 10 punch in the corner by, by uh, Dillinger and a mud hole by Dillinger on the other side on his other opponent. Ty Dillinger, had, oh, sorry, Ty Breaker to Styles and Dillinger has both of them on the outside. He gets, he underhooks one, underhooks the other, and tosses them both onto the apron. He's got Zayn, he's got Styles. They're both on the apron. He could knock both of them out. Amazing win for Ty Dillinger, who's, you know, the perfect 10, who we haven't seen on TV in forever, who everybody's been clamoring for, everybody wants success for, but no, he gets randomly flipped out like a piece of fucking garbage by Sami Zayn. Zayn and Styles trade some punches for a while. There's an exploder by Zayn. Zayn misses a haluva kick, which makes him almost eliminate himself with the amount of force he hits the, the corner with. That would have been funny. I mean, if, obviously, I'm just going to say it. AJ Styles wins the match. Styles hits a Pele that knocks Zayn off the apron, and Styles wins the match. If Sami Zayn, knowing that Sami Zayn was going to lose anyway, if Sami Zayn had gotten himself all jacked up and gone for the Huluva kick and taken himself over the turnbuckle and basically beat himself, that would have been hysterical. What we have instead is AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, which is what we had a week ago, which is what we had two weeks ago, which is what we had three weeks ago. So we buried 12 other people, including a lot of Canadians, to get us right back to where we started from. We have the exact same story. We have the exact same rematch that I don't think anybody really cares about. Owens versus Styles has been done to death. People want Styles in the main event scene or with Nakamura or with the WWE Championship. Nobody wants Styles in this match with Owens. It's a match we've seen already. So we buried, like I say, about 12 other people to get us right back to where we started in a match that nobody cares about. They have a quick scuffle in the ring. Kevin Owens gets chased off. Canadian gets chased off by the American. The American holds up the American Championship to end the show. And once again, I say, fuck this show. Fuck this show. Oh, yes. Naomi's a piece of shit. This match makes no sense. Fuck embarrassing all the Canadians just because it's Independence Day. Fuck this show. The best thing on this show was AJ Styles versus Chad Gable, which was a match that you knew the outcome of before it even happened. John Cena came back to say, America. Rusev came back to say, fuck anybody that thought Cena was facing gender. And gender came out to say, grrr, Americans. It's a holiday. I, I get it. But, I mean, all the all the writers gave the script to their kids this week, and they came up with the simplest... I Guys, you know, I will slate Raw up and down for the bullshit that they give us, but Raw was better than SmackDown this week. Raw is giving us great balls of fire, which is a stupid fucking name for a pay-per-view, but they've made up for it with a decent card. Raw slaughtered SmackDown this week. Anybody that's been watching this channel long enough knows how much it hurts me to say that. This show sucked. 
fuck this show. I hope NXT can salvage this week for me. I hope you guys join me for the Great Balls of Fire preview and pay-per-view pick -em. I hope you guys join me for the Q&A. I hope you go over to Monoxide's channel and check out Guapo Monoxide and Kristen and their new podcast that I still can't remember the fucking name of, and I'm sorry, but whatever you do, don't go and watch this show because fuck this show. I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later, but for right now, I am tagging out, and fuck Naomi.